Hey, what's up guys? This is Brandon Lee with Virtualization How To. Hope you guys are doing well. In today's topic, we're going to discuss a rapidly approaching support date, October 15th, 2022. That is the end of general support for both vSphere 6.5 and vSphere 6.7. What does that mean for your business? What considerations do you need to be making now to prepare for that end of general support? And what challenges do businesses face when thinking about upgrading their hypervisor platform? Let's well, stick around and we're going to discuss this topic a bit further. So guys, as promised, we're going to dive into this topic of end of general support period for vSphere 6.5, 6.7. So VMware graciously extended the end of general support for vSphere 6.5, 6.7 until October 15th, 2022 due to the pandemic. So uh, we are rapidly approaching that end of general support uh, period. October 15th, 2022. Businesses really need to be thinking about this end of general support because it affects so many different things. So just to tease this apart a bit, what are some of the considerations that you want to make when you are thinking about the ramifications of end of general support? Well, realistically, it places you and your business really in a position that you don't want to be in. Uh, you never want to be in a position where you're running business critical workloads on a solution that is deprecated. Because as we all know, I, I've worked with VMware products and solutions for many, many years now. And I think VMware support is fantastic. They do a tremendously good job of trying to assist, trying to help you However, you don't want to be in that position using a deprecated product because it just introduces risk into your environment, to be quite honest. And when you think about this too as well, it prevents you from not only taking advantage of newer features in the core hypervisor itself, uh, when you look at upgrading other VMware solutions that you may be running in the environment, those solutions as upgrades are released are naturally going to deprecate support for the vSphere hypervisor itself if you're running something that is uh, legacy deprecated or just completely not supported so again not a position you want to be in uh, you also don't get the latest functionality and features when you think about the latest v, uh, vSphere releases such as vSphere 7.0 uh, think about vSphere 7.0, uh, vSphere Tanzu. Uh, think about the uh, vSphere Lifecycle Manager improvements, vSAN improvements. So, so many things that have uh, been released uh, with the introduction of vSphere 7.0 and higher uh, update releases, such as Update 3 and Update 3C, that you don't get to take advantage of. And many of those things are extremely uh, powerful, robust new features and functionality that uh, businesses definitely benefit from. Now, with that said, what are the challenges though for businesses uh, upgrading from 6.5 or 6.7 that you really need to be thinking about? And arguably, this is my opinion, but I think one of the biggest challenges businesses need to be thinking about with their upgrades uh, from 6.5, 6.7 to vSphere 7.0 is outdated hardware. So not only are you looking at upgrading your hypervisor, but you also need to be looking at your hardware refresh cycle as well, uh, because this is gonna tie closely into this uh, upgrade to vSphere 7.0. Obviously, we're gonna have to start looking at compatibility there uh, from a VMware uh, support perspective and as well as your server uh, support hardware uh, perspective. All of those things come into play. So we need to start at this point looking at server hardware that we have in the data center. Is it uh, truly certified? Is it uh, compatible with vSphere 7.0? Definitely something that you want to start looking at. And it's maybe 
arguably increasingly important in 2022 due to supply chain issues. So a lot of server vendors right now, uh, if you look at uh, trying to purchase new server hardware, new networking gear, all of those things, there are increased lead times for many of those items. So as you start to look at these refresh cycles, we're looking at the October 15th, 2022 uh, deadline for general support. You have to weigh those things into the balance when you're looking at refreshing, uh, bumping up your vSphere version. Uh, you're gonna have to look at those hardware uh, refresh cycles and supply chain lead times. All of those things are going to go into this upgrade this year, perhaps more than ever before. Now let's take it from this angle. What if your server hardware is supported? What if you're running a, a 630 or newer, uh, another server vendor uh, hardware that's certified also with 7.0? One of the other things that you need to consider and take a look at is what boot technology are you using currently for your hypervisor? Uh, many of you know this, and I've written a blog post about this or many other sources out there uh, covering this detail, but vSphere 7 has deprecated support for booting from SD cards or USB devices or other uh, uh, types of hardware that are not going to withstand the more intensive uh, I.O. that comes from vSphere 7 because they've re-architected some logging and some other partitions there that uh, cause the boot partition and boot devices to have additional wear and tear from an I.O. perspective. So do your servers in general that are supported for vSphere 7, are they booting from SD cards, dual SD cards or some other similar technology? Well, you're going to need to look at retrofitting those with compatible and supported uh, boot architectures and uh, boot hardware. So another consideration there that organizations need to be making as they think about their upgrades to vSphere 7. The upgrade process itself is very straightforward. Uh, I've written many blog posts about how to take 6.5, 6.7 up to uh, 7.0 or 7.0 update 3, both using uh, Update Manager as well as the new vSphere Lifecycle Manager. Update Manager works rock solid, and then the new vSphere Lifecycle Manager uh, also works extremely well. Many benefits from using that. So I hope you've enjoyed this overview and uh, indulge me in my ramblings on about the uh, nearing end of general support for vSphere 6.5 and 6.7 and the considerations that businesses need to be making now. And hopefully some of these ideas, maybe some things uh, you've already thought about, but perhaps some things that uh, you might want to give attention to as well. Well, I'm Brandon Lee with Virtualization How To. Thank you for watching the video. Please do like the video and do subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you guys soon.